Hello, in this video we're going to bundle a JSPM AngularJS project for deployment. We're going to continue working on the JSPM Angular Core project that we've been building throughout the previous videos. And in this video we will go ahead and clone that repository again. And we'll change into the JSPM Angular Core directory. And we will check out the protractor setup branch that we worked on in the last video and we will create a new branch and we'll call it build setup. Now before we run npm install I want to make a change to the package.json and what I want to do instead of having this start task we can actually put the JSPM install in a post install script and then when we run npm install this post install script will run automatically so JSPM install will run automatically when we run npm install and while we're here we might as well add our script for running our dist folder so we can verify that our built application works correctly before we deploy it so we'll create a task named serve build and that task is going to set a node env environment variable to build and then it's going to run our server and then we'll, later we'll set up our server to look for the node env environment variable and determine what folder it should serve based on that. Now if we run npm install it'll install our npm dependencies and our jspm dependencies. Okay now that our dependencies are all installed I want to demonstrate a bug that happens with ESLint so if we run gulp ESLint we get this cannot find module ES traverse FB error and what happened is newer versions of ESLint stopped depending on that but the gulp ESLint plugin that we're using still relies on that so what we have to do is install an older version of ESLint. So if we do npm i-d and the i-d just stands for install save dev. Then we'll do ESLint at version 2.2.0. So now if we run gulp ESLint it will work. And we have one error that we found. So that's in our main unit test. So if we open our modules main, go to main unit test and control is not used anywhere. So we can simply remove it. Because the only thing these unit tests are checking right now is the scope. So if we ever decided to use the control, we can add that variable back in. But for now, we'll just remove that and then we'll verify that our tests still work. So we will do npm run unit tests. And they still work. So that didn't affect anything. And we should have solved our ESLint issue. And we did. So now everything is working well and I just wanted to get that out of the way to get things cleaned up for, for our build process because you don't want any errors in your build process, right? <laughs> now we can install our build dependencies. So we're going to do npm i-d, which again means install save dev and we have a list of dependencies to install so we're going to install gulp ng annotate gulp rename gulp rev gulp rev replace run sequence and gulp uglify and then we need to install a jspm dependency so we'll do jspm install and we're going to install npm colon clean css and that's because we have our CSS imported into our JavaScript and when we bundle the uh, JSPM bundler needs to know how to minify and handle the CSS that it's importing and 
we can make this a dev dependency in JSPM by adding dash dash dev. Okay, so that should take care of the basic infrastructure and now we can start actually uh, writing our build code. The first thing we're going to do is change our dev server. So we're going to server app.js and instead of only serving the client directory, we're going to change it so that it can decide if it wants to serve the dist or the client directory. And we're doing that by checking the process env node env variable that we set in our package.json. And if that is set to build, then we will serve this directory. Otherwise, we'll default to send, uh, serving the client directory. And then in our console statement, we are specifically saying what directory we are serving the app at. Next, we're going to open our index.html and we're going to set this up so that we can uh, more easily parse it when we're doing the build. So when we build, we don't need to have all of the imports for JSPM packages and config.js. Um, all this stuff is going to be bundled into our, our distributable app.js file. So we're going to get rid of all this when we build. To do that, I'm just going to surround this with these dev comments. And I'm going to write a regular expression that will look for these and just remove this whole section. And I could easily just write a new line into this file, but um, I just want to make it clear what we're doing. So I'm going to add another commented section and I'm going to call this prod. And here we're just going to have a script that imports our app min.js. So there's more elegant ways to do to do this, but I'm just trying to be clear so that when you look at this file, you know that this is specifically for development. And when we deploy to production, this is the actual script that we want to have included in our HTML. Next, we're going to take care of some other issues that are that might come up with our build process. So we're going to take those on first and specifically with the um, ng annotate what it's going to do is come through our code and make sure that our angular dependency injection is set up correctly and to tell it where to look we're going to add these ng inject tags so anywhere that we have a dependency uh, we want to make sure we have an ng inject tag there under it so that the ng annotate will know where to look and make sure that it gets that dependency injected correctly so we have a function here that calls url router provider this function calls in scope in home controller we have a constructor that could call a dependency so we're just going to add one there just in case you put something in there that you know you have a dependency that comes in later on and in our home config that's a function so we're going to add ng inject in that now we don't have any functions in our main controller that we need to add the ng inject to, but something we do need to do is take the leading slash off of the imports for our local project modules. And the reason for that is because of the bundler will actually interpret that as being the system root. So it'll look in your root directory instead of in your client directory when it's trying to resolve these dependencies. So in that, module and in the home module we have to take off those leading slashes and that should keep, uh, have us cleaned up pretty well for our build process now next we're going to create our build.js file so we'll create a new file in gulp tasks and name it build.js and this is where our build scripts are going to live And this is what our build.js file is going to, going to look like. So we're going to require our gulp and 
uh, the exec function is just something that simulates the command line so you can run command line commands through exec if you look down in the build clean task you'll see there's rm rf dist and that's the same command you would type on the command line to remove that directory so the exec command gives us access to the command line basically fs is for reading and writing to files ng annotate is for like like i said before um, setting up our angular dependency injection correctly rename allows us to rename files rev and rev replace will actually add hashes to our file names so uh, we can do cache busting with those and run sequence will allow us to run tasks in order so if tasks need to be run sequentially instead of all in parallel then you want to use run sequence for that and uglify of course will minify our javascript So our build task is going to use run sequence to run all of our build tasks. So build clean, we want to run that first and we want to make sure that that's done before we do anything else because it's going to remove our disk directory and then recreate it just so we know it's emptied out. And we don't want anything else building and putting things in there while it's being emptied out. So we, we make sure that we run that first. Then we're going to run less and we want to make sure that that's done because it's going to create our style CSS file which is our which the JavaScript bundler or JSPM bundler is going to use so we want to make sure that's done before we run the JavaScript bundler then we're going to build our HTML file and our JS and those don't depend on each other so we can run those at the same time and that's why they're in an array because that means run sequence will run them in parallel and then we're going to uh, build rev, so that'll add a uh, version hash to our app.js file. And finally, we're going to run build cleanup to clean up all of our uh, build artifacts out of our dist folder. The build clean task is, like I said before, it's just going to remove the dist folder and recreate it using the command line arguments or command line commands that would do that. Uh, and then build HTML, we're going to use FS, we're going to read in our index HTML file and we have some, well we have a uh, regular expression that's going to clear out the dev commented section and replace that with an empty string and it's also going to remove the prod tags so that just the script to appmin.js is going to be left over and then it's going to minify the HTML just by removing white space and new lines. So you'll see when we build it, it'll it'll be all minified. And then we're going to write that result out to the dist index.html. And next, our build.js is going to run bundle.js first. Bundle.js is going to use the exec function to run the same command that we run on the command line to bundle our JSPM project. So we want to cd into the client directory because that's where the root of all of our import um, paths are from so in order for JSPM to resolve those imports correctly we have to be in that client directory then we'll run JSPM bundle SFX and we'll tell it to use the main module JS as our as the entry point and it will just read through that and find all the files that it needs to include in the bundle and then we'll output that to dist app JS and we just tell it to skip source maps because we're not going to use those in production and we could put a minify ta uh, flag here, but we don't want that because we need to run ng annotate and do things on the unminified version of this uh, JavaScript first. So once that is done, then we'll come back to the build.js and actually pick up that app.js out of the dist folder, run ng annotate on it, and then we'll minify it with using uglyfy. Then we'll rename it to app min.js and we'll put that back into the gulp, into the uh, dist folder. Once those are done, the HTML and the JS are built and then we can rev the JS file so we can have a cache busting uh, file name. So rev is going to call rev files. Rev files is simply going to get the app min.js, add the rev hash to the file name and then it'll create a manifest that maps the file 
the original file to the new file name so that when we come back here to build rev we'll get that manifest and use it and go into index html and replace the original file name with the new uh, rev file name and then we'll just put that back into index html in the dist folder and then once that's all done we're going to run build cleanup and that's simply going to remove the app.js, app.min.js, and the rev manifest json from our uh, dist folder so that when we deploy we don't have those in our deployment and that's it that's our build script so now we can test it out and make sure that everything works the way we expect so we will just go down to our command line we'll run uh, gulp build and it can take some time for the JSPM bundler to work so, so uh, if it seems like the build process is taking a while as your project gets larger it's going to take longer because of the JSPM bundling process now that that's done we can run our build or yeah our build server so we'll run uh, npm run serve build and that's going to set that special node and variable to build and then we can open our browser and go to localhost 20080 and everything works the way we expect it to and you can see that our app min.js has a revved version we can look at that in the disk directory so our index HTML is nice and minified we have our our app min.js with its um, rev version in there and our rev app min.js is in our disk folder so everything is working the way we expect it and that is how you build a JSPM angular project feel free to comment if you have any questions or suggestions if you found this video helpful please give it a like and if you'd like to see more of my videos please subscribe to my channel and as always, thank you for watching.